hi everyone. Oh boy, it is 10.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That time, the voice speaking the time, is coming from upstate South Carolina. Anderson, how are you guys feeling? The pulsing dangerous frequencies. Now, uh, my brain is turning to mush. I understand and identify with those who have been leaving comments saying, I feel like I'm dying. Um, yeah, it's been really very difficult since this, you know, Hurricane Dorian thing and since my neighbor on the other side of me got Wi-Fi. Now, I'm not saying that it's just that. I, I think it's just the culmination of everything. But I have been experiencing balance problems, headaches that I do not normally get, um, a whole lot of physical pain, exhaustion that is near crippling. I just, uh, but the functioning basic functioning. Wow. It's, uh, well, blasting away. Here they go. It's only 1030. Oh, right. We have Hurricane Dorian. Also want you to take note of what's happening up here in uh, the Northwest, Oregon and Nevada. Yeah. I was watching this at about 619 and the creation, the creation of weather via nanotechnology. Well, I'm going to show you some of the frequencies going off in Oregon, but I just want you to look. I also want you to take, uh, this was at 619. This was, uh, I recorded this at 619 PM. Okay. You've got Hurricane Dorian that stretches into the Gulf, going all the way, well, into the Atlantic, all the way, you know, uh, off the coast of Canada. Really? My God, there are so many uh, obviouses that should beg questions, and how do you get people to question? How do you get people to question? I don't know. You got me. So, here's College of DuPage. And let's go to a localized um, sector down here at the bottom. Oh, wow. Right, do you see something right off? Do you see the extremely low frequencies? Do you see the crossing frequencies right here? Uh, and the frequency, the pulsating Doppler radar. Oh, and this circular, well, next red harp ring, uh, the extremely low frequencies, Doppler radar, high frequencies. The, and that is the signature of the, um, the defined circular pattern, which you see right here. And these sustained extremely low frequencies you know, coming from uh, the border of North Carolina, South Carolina. Look at this. Sustained. Now, it is 1040 p.m. And look at these extremely low frequencies. Very obvious. And when they're crossing, it will... It does not uh, portend circumstances that are, hey, we're going to have a wonderful day tomorrow. Um, let's go back. I also, I, I need to show you this. Sent to me by a subscriber whom I'd like to thank. Agenda Free, that's a YouTube channel and does live uh, broadcasting of, you know, events. Uh, do you see something that 
is highly unusual for a hurricane. A hurricane split. She, okay. How? All right. I'm not even sure how to address any of what is going on because everything's become so obvious that, yeah, man's hand in these weather events, whether it's Hurricane Dorian or all of the flash flooding that has been occurring virtually every single day throughout 2019. Okay, now, I think Agenda Free was... Uh, live mainstream media tracking of Hurricane Dorian. Do you think anybody paid attention to what you are looking at right here? The extremely low frequencies that literally have broken apart our quote-unquote hurricane. Uh, did Agenda Free mention it? Probably not. Okay. Now, we also had those, the, the, the sustained, you know, frequencies. This was at 619. And let me see if I can get to here. Well, you can see the frequencies at the top of Hurricane Dorian. Uh, the harp next red signatures which means high frequency heating but look how unbelievably straight lined is that the outer band of dorian god i'm gonna have to do research on the sawtooth frequencies because i invited you guys anyone you know, accept the invitation to do that research? No, I don't think so. All right, look at how jagged that is. I mean, it, look, it's obvious, very obvious. And I, I hate, I hate arguing the obvious. Nothing, nothing kind of gets me more annoyed. So this was 619. So we still have these extremely low frequencies that are operating. Yeah, I think I got, yeah, look, look at all of this, all of these little severe weather, precipitation storms, soldiers, as I call them, operating here in Oregon, um, and 619, so let's go to current time, and it's gotten a little bit bigger, yeah, it has gotten bigger, um, here we go. Don't even have to hit play. Extremely low frequencies, sawtooth frequency, and our lovely harp next red rings from Doppler radar. All our weather is controlled now. And arguing with people over, you know, whether or not man is creating the weather or just modifying, I, I look, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. You can think what you want. Uh, it doesn't, does it really matter? What we are seeing is horrific damage, destruction caused by man. So arguing over, you know, whether the hurricane was created or not, I, I don't, so many of us have barely have any energy at all. You know, it's... So I'm really grateful to those who post videos, the HARP report. Now, the HARP report wasn't posting for quite a while and posted this video today. And you need to listen to this and you need to circulate the HARP report. You know, more and more are posting on the very visible signs that this is being manipulated by man. Mode. And here we have South Carolina. 
and I'm going to stop it, and we're going to look at the cloud tops right at daybreak. So one thing we notice, there is a line in the cloud tops, and they're basically uh, heating the tops of the thunderheads and creating a hot air layer aloft to decrease the uh, convection and weaken the storm. So actually if you make it too big that's not so visible. Okay so here we've got uh, nice visual representation <coughs> of a beam of some sort coming from the second lobe. This is Georgia. This is South Carolina. Here's the second lobe. So we want to see if we can't find the origin point of this long straight beam. And this thing stayed a very long time, and I can tell you why they moved it. So let's look at the Georgia map. Sorry, the South Carolina map. So we're, we're going to look at this blob here. And we just uh, step through. And it's going to be this. Here's the Georgia state line. Here's the first blob. Here's the second blob. Here's the blob we're looking at. It says Beaufort. And it says St. Helena Island. I wonder what's on St. Helena Island that could make a, a line in the cloud tops like that. Well, what's this? Marine Corps Air Station Beaufort Merritt Field. <coughs> Well, that could only happen if it has one of those big SBX-type transmitters. I wonder if it has one of the big SBX-type transmitters. Sure enough, they do. So this is a 60-foot diameter phased array radar of the SBX type that can put out uh, maybe a 2 million watt um, continuous heating beam. And if you recall from the satellite image, it's aimed east-southeast, and it stays in a fixed position. So it's, it's uh, really east-southeast. Now, I wonder why it would have to be fixed. Let's have a look at the surroundings. Well, you know, it's safely at the southern, southeastern tip of the air base, or the marine base. And then it goes this direction, oh, over a built-up area. What is this built-up area? Beaufort National Cemetery. So, the only built-up thing here is a cemetery. And the rest of this is all uh, a nature preserve, which is a brackish uh, marsh, saltwater marsh. So, in other words, this beam is coming from this tiny point here, off in this direction, where there's absolutely no people. And they probably have some kind of a perimeter control to keep fishing boats out of this area here. I mean, surely they would. Because you don't want fishermen showing up here and getting fried. I mean, literally cooked. Now, you know, if someone is in that area, you need to go look for uh, dead herons, snakes, frogs. Things are getting cooked in this area here. So let's go back to uh, the big picture, and I'll explain why. Let me explain why they would be um, trying to heat this part of the um, eye wall, and also the timing of why this is being done. Okay, this is being done all night long when nobody's looking, and then in daybreak, they don't want anybody seeing this for obvious reasons but they are actually shaving off the tops of these thunderheads and that decreases the convection on the east side of the, of the hurricane here. And then about 30 to 45 minutes after sunup, the D layer of the ionosphere has formed again, 30, 40, 50 miles up. And then they raise the beam and they start heating the ionosphere probably in this area. Very and did you not see the very defined line right here and here and here so they're hitting this with an awful lot of frequencies but the harp report 
it's very important that you listen to is it in this video the fifth or it might be his video on the third but let's just listen probably in this area very very easy task for them and then we start seeing circular downdrafts it takes about 30 minutes for that air to expand from 30 miles up and press its way all the way down to the surface where it can affect the weather now here we actually see the circular shapes showing up and this is right I mean, this is like what 40 miles away from the base so they've got a real good angle to uh, accomplish that but you'll notice where they had weakened the thunderstorms on the eastern side uh, the storm is really starting to come apart because it's it's unbalanced now so the opposite side is comparatively stronger and the whole thing it's like a bicycle wheel with something unbalanced the whole thing starts coming apart and they're saying on the weather channel that the rain is not as bad as they predicted etc cetera, etc cetera. and that is because of this uh, megawatt heating that went uh, Okay, so I do want also to draw your attention to the so-called eye and see if you can see, well, the right angled shapes and the squares, the uh, triangle or the V that suddenly comes about. right here there's heating going on right here and take a look inside the eye the rectangle the V did you catch it right here this is being hit with frequencies now whether it's coming from both on the the, the marine base and view fort or whatever or satellites um, there is no one way unfortunately they have a lot of methods and a lot of tools now I was listening to his to his video um that he had posted <laughs> and this came up this was next in queue Amy Goodman Democracy Now the quintessential queen of disinformation agents and she is so you know and I got it in 2011 with all of the tornadoes. And every day, this woman was interviewing people like Bill McGibbon, uh, 350.org. It's climate change. It's global warming. And never does she interview any scientists. Oh, right. The tens of thousands of scientists who dispute this global warming climate change hysteria that actually comes from uh, the queen of independent media. No one betrayed me more than this woman in terms of, you know, journalists or, you know, no one. I mean, the betrayal was big. I felt it. Democracy Now! I walked around with my bag, Democracy Now! and donated to Democracy Now! And then when I realized, holy shit. Yeah, uh, she does report an awful lot of truth. But boom, climate change. Every event that we have, it's climate change, climate change. And it makes me sick. Because people are being murdered, Amy Goodman. And guess what, Amy Goodman? You are helping to get them murdered. Biography and also your work there. The coral reefs. There's 24-hour day coverage of this devastation of the hurricane. 
but almost never do they mention the issue of climate change. I'm so sick. I get so disgusted with these people now. I, they repulse me, and it's amazing because, oh, God, yeah, Amy Goodman stamped on her forehead. It is integrity. It never questioned the veracity of Amy Goodman. It was so hard to get that, oh, my God, yeah, another one working for the United Nations, pushing climate change and global warming. And because all the liberal left Democrats, they love Amy Goodman. And yeah, you know, they believe that she is just 100%. You know, she's the personification of integrity. And she's not. She's not. So trying to get through to people that Amy Goodman, yeah, the woman's lying to you. You can't. So it was the Harp report that I was actually okay, listening to. And he has a very important uh, report, futures, contracts, options, the fake eye. And let me bring it up to futures and contracts because people are being fucking murdered for money. Money. And you can listen, I, everything is linked to below, so uh, listen to even more evidence that the Harp Report posted on the 3rd, that yes, man is steering this, this thing that we've been watching for, what, five days, a week? Just and get, get into position so that they can weaken it and drive it north. So Hurricane Up, Grand Bahama, and Abaco Island were sacrificed because of the Hurricane Futures contract on Florida. And if you go to cmegroup.org, or sorry, .com, uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, you can download this PDF that describes their uh, Hurricane Futures options. And... Uh, you know, why would they have this downloadable by the public if this, if these hurricane index futures and options contracts were not currently available? They've got all these uh, legalistic terms, trading rules, when they pay out, and here's the interesting thing, the locations. Um, we know Florida is covered. Florida is absolutely covered by this futures contract here. And Brownsville to Florida border. The one that's not covered is Florida to North Carolina Virginia border. And this is actually called the HSA uh, contract. And if you go look at that up as a NASDAQ ticker, it doesn't come up, it uh, comes up as some other thing because this is traded via open outcry in the NASDAQ 100 pit. In other, In other words, words they, they don't keep a digital record. record. You, you can't, can't look up, gee, how many people have HS, HSA contracts and what are they paying for them right now? Why am I saying that the HSA contract is not paid? It's because uh, Hurricane Dorian is pretty much expected to make landfall in Southern, Cal Southern Carolina and tear up Northern Carolina. And then um, here's where the Virginia border is. That's, that's where this uh, contract, contract ends. So, so it goes all the way from Florida to the Virginia border. So, so somebody didn't pay for that contract, but they, they sure as hell paid for the Florida contract. contract. You, you might be saying, saying, oh, this is bull. You know, hey, it, it just weakened because it, it hit some cold water or something. So, so let's, let's have a look at that. that. Okay. Uh, when it was north of Grand Bahama Island, here we got shallow water. I mean, very shallow water. And it stayed Category 4, Category 5 for like 40 hours. And now that it's over, over deep water, it suddenly weakens. Or well, maybe there's cold water here. Nope. Due to the thing called the Gulf Stream, where you have 
uh, super warm water from the Gulf of Mexico going around the tip of, of the uh, Florida Peninsula and going up north, all this water is the same temperature. So no, it did not hit, suddenly hit some cold water. So a couple of hours after the uh, hole was punched on the west side of the supposed eye, uh, what we have is, in the radar now is uh, big uh, sheets of rain coming down. I mean, uh, you know, that dry zone rotates around and triggers a lot of uh, storms here on the west. And what that does is it, it brings a lot of cold rain down onto the sea surface, dropping the sea surface temperature about 10 degrees. And that 10 degrees is critical because it robs the storm of uh, the future energy and also the impetus to move west into Florida. So all right, so all links are below and you can, you know, check out uh, all of the evidence that the HARP report is, is uh, posting. Now, you know, you, you think about storm surge. They're constantly talking about storm surge, right? Here, the Weather Channel, they post this uh, September 3rd, 2019. The continues to close in on the southeast United States, and it will bring with it the hazards of damaging wind and also the potential for significant storm surge flooding. One place that we know that is really vulnerable to storm surge flooding, that's Charleston, South Carolina. There, there could, could be, be as much as three feet of water rise above normally dry ground in and around the Charleston area. Let, Let me show you what that looks like. Here, Here for example, example, imagine three feet of water comes in. in. When, when that happens, it's too late to evacuate. Three, three feet of water can knock you off your feet and also potentially flood the first floors of homes and businesses. It is also possible, depending on the track of the rain, that we could see water rise even higher than that, maybe as much as six feet. That's above my head. Now, now, that, that is, is truly a life-threatening scenario where you absolutely have to be on the second floor of a building or a residence in, in order to survive this kind of outcome. Now, now again, remember, Hurricane Dorian's forecast is unknown. Stay tuned. The latest forecast from National Hurricane Center and... Anybody seeing that would be, wow, kind of nervous. You know, the... Look, man is controlling weather. What man wants to bring, he's going to bring. If he's going to bring the kind of devastation that the Bahamas have experienced, and just watching this, you know, aerial view, um, now hurricanes move, and this one just sat there. You know, it's like, oh, and it sat over the Houston area for four days? Okay. Well, we can't get people to question anything. Um, I guess mainstream media, government officials have robbed their brain and just, uh, I don't know, implanted a hard drive to whatever it is that we say, you will believe. You look at these, these people, and this woman, and you, uh, look, I don't know about you, but I see this and I'm, more and more people, okay? More and more people. Either dead, or their homes destroyed, their businesses destroyed, everything destroyed. And we know that this was not Mother Nature. This was brought about by man. It was not a hurricane. No, there were no 180 mile per hour winds. They can bring about this devastation, call it a hurricane, and hey, it works for the majority of the world's population. Yeah. And what are these people going to do? But 
Amy Goodman, she says it's climate change. So Amy Goodman is 100% complicit with the destruction that you see here. She never talks about the military. And what is truly disgusting about Amy Goodman is that she talks to the young who are so inspired by her. They ask her questions and she answers, you go where there is silence. In other words, what people are not reporting, you do the investigations of, hey, how about the military? And how about the technology that they are using to create this kind of destruction? Amy, do you ever report on that? No. No. So, uh, people have asked why are they doing this in the comment section below my videos. And I've seen the responses. I don't understand why people are responding with, um, well, a, kind of like a shaming response. Um, hard hitting, you know, hostile. You know, there's a lot of people who are waking up and they don't know what's going on. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, someone said there's a lot of, you know, videos on my playlist weather modification, but if we could, you know, just say that without attacking, that would be good. And I will link below to this video, Coastlines Under Attack, Storm Surges, Artificially Created, Deborah Tavares. And in this, she explains why our military is bringing about storm surges. Storm surges, storm surges. Well, whatever happened, you know, Hurricane Dorian spawned what, 22 tornadoes, but did not bring about the flooding that, well, think about, think about over 800,000 people who were ordered to evacuate Monday noontime and hardly, well, look, this is very hard because when we compare it, the Bahamas is, you know, in a category of its own. Though what the individuals there are experiencing has been experienced by those in central United States. Mm, oh, well, states all over. Virtually every day. The flooding of the farms six feet of water that didn't come from a storm surge or a hurricane trees down power outages tornadoes all over the place flash flooding people dying hail baseball size uh charleston got away with very little damage but the tornadoes these are all the lines, so you can go through these hurricanes. And, you know, it's bad, but you know, you kind of get through it. I just moved back to my house eight, eight days ago from the last hurricane, hurricane from Lawrence. We just moved back in. And uh, here we are, waiting, 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 waiting to go, go again. again. It's always, it's always a concern, concern because, you know, you're, you're, I'm, I'm right, right on the water. I'm right, right on the water, water so you're always worried. Ain't nothing you can do, so, so. Light, light it out. Pay your insurance, insurance premiums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh.
laughing, God. Lawrence literally sat on top of us in three days. It was rain that killed us last time. Just rain. Yeah, it was wrenching everything. But I didn't count on this. I didn't think you could have a tornado in a... Like, where it wasn't like flat, like Kansas, you know? But... Obviously, you can. You can when is this was supposed to be my when man is controlling the weather. You can. Yes. Look, weather modification by artificial satellites, and uh, yeah, influence the jet stream and cause precipitation. Modify the jet stream path. Therefore, you're modifying the weather. You can increase the humidity. Uh, you, and you can cause rapid heating of air masses and yes you can create a whirlwind or a small tornado you can increase the strength of tornadoes or decrease the strength of tornadoes yeah that's just one pattern artificial satellites and you can read about how, uh, you know, they use these artificial satellites, that, you know, the energies, the microwaves. I, I went, I went from, from my parents' house, house with, with my, my children, children and, and I had children and, 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 and you know, other relationships and, and this is going to be the first time I ever lived, lived on mine. mine. But, but maybe it was meant to be. I don't, I don't have, have a lot, lot of memories attached to it yet. yet. I'm, just I'm just kind of picking out a few things, things to salvage. salvage. We were planning to ride, to ride it out, out and, and I just happened, happened to see on the, on the news that, that tornado, tornado had touched down on the island, island and I figured, I figured it would be down close, close to the pier, pier you know. You know. I happened to be looking, looking at this video somebody, somebody shot and, and the Channel 7, 7 News and I thought, that's, that's my couch! couch. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty distinctive. distinctive. It's pretty, pretty ugly and pretty distinctive. distinctive. I don't know that I, I can personally do it from the standpoint right, right now, now, so I'm going to pick up a few of my mementos and go fill, fill up a gas can, can for the generator at home and It'll probably, probably get me later, later tonight, tonight when I have, I have a chance, chance to sit and think about everything. everything. All right. I will... I'll link below to everything. Um, Charleston. Well, Charleston got away with very little. Virginia urges evacuations. Um, you look at this tornado and, well, a whirlwind. A whirlwind. It's a whirlwind. Wow. It's a whirlwind. A whirl wind or a small tornado this guy explains why tornadoes erupt in hurricanes I can't listen to it again this, this is County Park, Park in Charleston, Charleston where, the where the storm roared ashore, ashore with sheets, sheets of rain pounding the historic city. city. Charleston, Charleston woke up to some, some extreme conditions, flash flooding, flooding intense, intense wind gusts, and, and widespread power, power outages. In the, in the downtown, downtown area, streets, streets turned, turned into streams. streams. First, First responders had to push the stuck motorist to safety. safety. When I, I thought on water, water, I was trying to back, back up. up. But I could back, back up. Officials were also out in high water vehicles surveying for damage and looking for people in distress with this, this warning. These streets are flooded. We don't, don't know, know what's underneath these flooded streets. We do not know how deep these streets are flooded. The 
Dan is hammering on the deck. The boat is reacting to, to, to gusts of wind. wind. Dan Olivier spent the night aboard his home with the scar by the And everything was fine, and his, his uh, boat is fine. Look at the pictures. This is Charleston. I, I believe that they are turning the power off in most areas. This is the damage from Hurricane Dorian. This tree, the, the, the fungal disease is really Look at it. Of course those limbs fell. They're so weak. Children playing, I guess cleaning out a storm drain. Uh, so it does not appear as if the coast got badly hit. And... Um, we're living something, you know, that is so unbelievable. Um, we can't stop it. There's no way to stop it. The blasting of the frequencies. Look at the frequencies that are being set off in the Missouri, Illinois border. And this one has like a jagged look to it. So, you know, the frequencies are different. Uh, you know, Trump, what, he goes golfing and people don't think that Trump has anything. He's fighting, he's fighting everybody. He's fighting even his own administration, apparently. Yeah. Well, as he's fighting and playing 4D chess, so many of us are literally dying and getting destroyed. All links are below.